Thomas, how much longer do I have to be in here? It's, I've been all day. It's getting dark now. And it's getting ridiculous. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Can you just hand me that, please? Yeah, I need this. I'm tired of this. Listen, how much longer, honestly? You, you honestly, you're going to stand here until you come up with a better reason for picking the Telluride other than the daytime running lights are orange. But they're so orange. It looks like a Hellcat. It's so cool. You're watching Throttle Heads. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the 2021 Hyundai Palisade Autobiography. No, calligraphy. 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 Calligraphy is the Range Rover. That's the Range Rover, that's right. And all we've heard about for the last year is how much of a bargain this is in its class, along with the Telluride. So we've brought along a 2021 Kia Telluride as well to see what's what. What's what is a couple of fully loaded, all-wheel drive, three-row, semi-luxury SUVs for about $55,000 Canadian, or about 45 grand US. These represent a massive value, assuming that they can do everything right. So today we want to find out if they can, and if so, which one would we pick? If you're new to Thought House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. In the Hyundai Palisade, this has a naturally aspirated V6 with how many horsepower? 291 horsepower. 291. And 262 pound-feet of torque. Yeah, okay. 3.8 litre displacement though, not too shabby. And it has a sport mode. I'm going to do a launch. You ready? Uh, I've got the draggy, so why don't we measure the 0 to 60? You want to do 0 to 60 in the I Hyundai do, Palisade? I want to okay. do the 0 yeah. to 60. All right. The world deserves to know. <laughs> do they? Okay. Right, you let me know when you're ready. I am ready. Okay, here we go. Ready? Wash. Now we're talking. And okay, what do we got? Okay, so <laughs> the claimed time yes. in perfect settings on yep. summer tires yep. is 7.1. Okay. We did mm -hmm. on winter tires with both of us in the car 8.27. The second good. slower. It's not so good. It's not so good. But there's two of us. Okay. It's fine. Anyway. The thing that I wanted to say about this car is that admittedly, when I first got in it, I thought it was turbocharged. And that's embarrassing for someone who does this for a living. But do you want to know why? Sure. Okay. Because the shifts are so smooth that I thought, what I thought was a little bit of turbo lag was actually a little bit of a shift. There's no kick in between them. You just get this like surge as it gets back up into the power band because there's a downshift. The transmission and engine calibration in the Palisade is absolutely world class. It's really nicely tuned. It really I is. I haven't felt a shift this entire time. No, you, you, you can't tell it has a, it even has a transmission. It's pretty incredible. I, I, the thing is, is that you can put an engine and a transmission together and put it on four wheels, but what really happens is the last stage where the people come together and tune the car to actually drive smoothly. And credit where credit's due, the, this one anyway, is so well dialed in, perfect. So, so why don't we take this from the, from the angle of everything they do is great, where does it not match up to the luxury ones? I think for me, the first thing yeah. is the wind noise and the, and the lack of refinement in the engine. Yes. Something that you get with the bigger cars, the twin turbo V8s and stuff, it's much smoother. I think it's just general insulation of the entire cabin. Yeah, it's not that insulated. Right? I'm hearing kind of like valve train noise and I'm hearing like engine characteristics that I don't need to hear. This is a car that constantly reminds you that everything is going to be better for the everyday when it's an EV. Is this is just one of those cars that would just be better off quiet. I don't need to hear that. Absolutely. The, these are just waiting to be EVs. Yes. Like it's it's, it's really where are. it's going to be perfect, especially, and that's also going to give you a low center of gravity. But for now, you know, as you said before, this has future-proofed the car. It's a naturally aspirated V6. It's probably going to be very reliable, even if it's not. Benefit of the doubt, there's a 10-year warranty. 10-year warranty. God, this is Throttle House doing proper consumer advice right now. Well, you know what it is? You can't say that we don't do it, okay? It, it's born out of the fact that 
Thomas and I have had these cars for a few days now, and we really like them. We genuinely really, they're just, really they're like them. They're just really, really good. And it's not even really that slow, honestly. It's got, there you go. <laughs> it's, there's almost like a baby G-Wagon to the sound. Yeah, yeah, there's kind of like a, what's the word? Well, at least it's got more than four cylinders. That's all I'll say. But it's quite I'm, comfortable back here. Yeah, the ride, we should talk about that. Well, before we get to the back seat, I got a funny feature that I got to show you. Um, the ride is not perfect. No. But that's kind of down to the fact that for some reason, we nowadays insist on putting big dumb wheels on cars. This has got whatever it's got. It's 20 19, inches. 19, 20, yeah. yeah. 20? Really? 20. Oh, come on. You don't need that. I or want my, more rubber. My mum's watching. 20. I have not lost my tears. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, you spend too much time in Canada. Okay, the ride is fine. It soaks up the, the kind of undulations very well and it's very controlled, but the, there's crashes over the bumps, right? On the harsh impacts, you can feel them. Yeah. And that's where the Germans definitely, well, not all of them actually. So I can the, see them. This middle row is shaking the oh, entire really? time. Yeah, which is another thing. Speaking you, of which, you why are you know. in the back seat, James? I just want to test it, you know? Okay. I've got the double sunroof here. Yeah. It feels airy, it feels spacious. I've got the light cream interior. Do you have room back there? I do have room. Oh. There's actually, I think there's like 27.7 inches of leg room. I don't know what the number is. <laughs> Here's the number. Here's the number. It's, it's comfortable. Check this out. I've, I've assigned this button to B. Ooh. Can you hear me right now? I can. Yeah. This is probably a little echo coming through. This is hilarious. Oh my God. So this is in the Escalade, yes. right? And we thought that this was new and exciting. And admittedly, it's in this car. We know nothing. We I didn't nothing. even know it was in this car. And here it is. But right now, the way that that's echoing, I really feel like a tour guide. And if you look to your left, you'll see a janky old house with a little bit of a rundown pickup truck in front of it. Yeah, they you look like the people that once called the police on us when we were driving in Aventador. I must be mistaken. That <laughs> not could have been yeah. them, no. There's some plasticky stuff going on back here, though. Oh, like, I would hope that there's plastic. I'm going to turn this off now, knowing me. My, my armrest here is a cup holder. Instead well, of like at least you have a cup holder. Are the seats back there heated and cooled? No. No, but they're heated and cooled in the second These ones row. are heated and cooled. Yeah. But I do have a USB. Wow. Does this have USBs? Look at that, right there. Yeah. USBs in the seats. All right, let me show you how fast a Kia Telluride is. Because okay. it's gonna be a whole different thing. Okay. And by a whole different thing, I mean exactly the same. Exactly it's the same, same engine, yeah. the same all-wheel drive system, the same eight-speed gearbox. Yeah. But is it the same, Thomas? To 60 miles an hour. Why are we doing zero to 60 tests in? <laughs> That's cars. how you do it. All right, are you ready? Okay, you strapped I in. am ready. The G-forces! Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Success. There we go. All right. You ready? What did what, what, what did I do? 8.27. 8.27? This was 8.13. Whatever. What no, stop, no, stop waving. No one's cheering. No one's cheering. That could be down to the tires. They these could are, literally these be down tires, tires are yes. not as aggressively snow tires. Yes. They're they're more sporting. They are also winter tires. You but, know what? I will say it's loud back here. It is loud. It is quite loud. And that's where these don't compare to the luxury competition. I feel like that conversation mode was installed out of necessity. Yeah. Not, uh, yeah. Like, uh, if you're sitting in the back seat of an X7, it's going to be quieter than this. It well, must I'll, be said. I'll put it back in comfort. Okay. That's not going to do anything. Doesn't All I'm hearing do is tire noise yeah, back here. Yeah, tire noise and wind noise. Yeah. Um, there's also, you're, okay, there's a lot of room back here. There is. Like, I'm completely comfortable. There I has, could do There has hours. to be some compromises to, the, right. to the price. To the price, and yeah. it's fine. But they, but they haven't made compromises. For example, in comfort mode... It, it, doesn't, it, right it doesn't short shift. No. It lets me rev it all out. They could have had a high rating, you know, I'm not getting the best mileage on here, to be honest. No, it's not good, is what, it? What am I getting? Hold on. Uh, the average is 13.8 liters per 100 kilometers. You know what though? For the fact that you can tow a boat, carry a family, tons of room, naturally aspirated engine, like it's not really that bad. And it drives fine. Like it doesn't, I don't, you know, the, we had a CX-9 recently. Yes. And that's an arguably prettier car. It is, yeah. 
and it handled its mass better. But I think the steering in this feels more natural. I, yeah, some people disagree with us on that. I'm on your side with this one, which is rare. Yeah. I think that the steering in this is very intuitive. It's light and numb-ish, but there's nothing that's, you know, what there's nothing different about it. That's exactly what I expect, right? Slightly overboosted E-pass e rack, like it's fine. It does the job not difficult to operate this vehicle. It's also got a pretty good turning radius and a fantastic backup camera. Both of them do. Bet better than the LS500. Yeah, we just better tested, than a flagship <laughs> Lexus. <laughs> that costs $140,000. There's no excuse for that, Lexus. There's just no excuse. Like, come on. Okay, so do we agree then, as far as the drive goes, this and the Palisade are pretty much identical? They're pretty much identical. So the, I mean, the biggest decision-making thing then is style. And features. Now, as important as styling is, I think there's a disclaimer here. This isn't normally the sort of cars we dream about and go for. No, like, it's this, definitely this, not a throttle This has. makes me feel yeah. like I'm on the plane and I've just remembered that my son Kevin is at home. <laughs> it's right? exactly That's what they are, yes. So, this is cool though. I like this Telluride where I don't have that. No, well, they both have it proudly on the back, but this is a cooler name because this represents a town in Colorado. That's not a, that's not a yeah. cooler name. In fact, this is cooler in every no, single no, way. No, hold on. It's not a cooler name. This is a palisade. You know what a palisade is? That's really, really cool. Isn't it just a bunch of sticks? No, it's not a bunch of sticks. It's the sticks that the, the, the good guys in the movie... It's the sticks. They, they, they go into the forest and they make them into the spikes and the, for their final last stand. It's a palisade. It's like a, right. a wall. But this car is American. It yeah. is designed <laughs> in California. <laughs> it is named after an American town. Yeah. And it's built in Georgia. Yeah. Not this... South, I like South Korea actually. Yeah, it's actually, very, and it's very honest about what it is because it is a South Korean brand. Now, like we really need to talk about the styling here because it's 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 important enough to people that it will make the decision between them. So right? I so I've researched, I've gone on the forums, I've looked at comments. People seem to be completely split half half on this. It's like it's like whether you stand up or sit down to wipe your bum. Half the world does it one way and aren't aware that the other half do it the other way. And even in this moment, people are going to be going. You wait, what, you sit down to what? <laughs> like, right, it's yeah. a phenomenon. Um, yeah, yeah, or it's also the front to back or back to front. Anyway, so these lights are amazing. I'll give them that. However, have you ever seen the show Ed, Ed, and Eddie? Yes. Eddie, the dumb one. Right. This kind of looks like him. Okay, we have to see a picture of that. I yeah. need to remind myself what <laughs> we'll that looks a picture like. Up. But yeah, it's just, it's, it's a good looking vehicle, but the, the best part about it is that it's very rugged with the black and then the green. Well, this is the black, this has the Nightfall package. Nightfall. Which I think in the States is called the Night Sky package. Obviously some market research has happened and they'll be like, oh, Canadians won't respond to Night Sky. Or they, it was over a phone call and someone's like, it's a Nightfall. I say, yeah, no, it's called the Night Sky. <laughs> yeah. Put that on the website. 100%, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and, but this is also in moss, the moss color. Moss. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is like a, I think it's, it's like a, there's some blue in it. There's a lot of chrome going on here. Okay, this has to be said that this is like a kind of rugged off-roady kind of thing, and this is like very Escalade. Well, I, I picked this up next to where a Defender was, was standing. Yeah. And it looked like a little baby Defender. Yeah, yeah. So I, I get that. I, this is, yeah, I like what you're saying with the Escalade. The way these lights come down, I they're, like that. They're really neat though. Like the, this is a really interesting design piece. The thing is, is that right now Hyundai is just going bonkers with the styling, like way too much. Uh, the Sonata. Like the, the Sonata Elantra. and like, well, the, the, they've designed the Elantra 14 times in the last four years, right? Now it's, so, in, the, now it's in the mirror dimension. Yeah, that's right. From, like, uh, in, in a, this is a bit much. It's a bit much, but- It just I looks like a giant ketchup slash mustard packet that you get with your temporary- <laughs> How many, how many similes can we put in one <laughs> video series? <laughs> Okay. I know. Okay, anyway. I like it. I yeah. like both. I don't care enough to decide. I think the interior is really important for these yeah. because it's a passenger and driver experience. Okay, do we want to start with... Well, no. Well, no. Just, just before that, I just want to mention the rears. Okay. The, so the rear, it's gone a bit escalady with this, with the window here. Yeah, it is cool though that even though they share the same platform, none of the panels are identical at all, right? Everything is unique to each car. No, and, they, and this looks like a Kia. It looks like a, the same company that makes the Kia Salt. It they, has the design language. This has the design language. At least they're honest with what they are. Uh, they're great looking, whatever. Can we look at the interior of this one first? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah, okay. I know it doesn't have a digital caster. Yeah, no, I was gonna say that immediately. Uh, but yeah. you love, Analog meets digital. I do. Well, you but actually, I, you've crafted this narrative that I love analog meets digital. I'm not sure that's entirely true. I, yeah. I don't think that this is a particularly fantastic gauge cluster anyway. No, the, the silver, the silver chain around the cluster. Doesn't I called it 
bezeling once, and that was wrong. It's not. It's knurling. Nerding. With a K. Yeah. Got it right. Okay. It is very nice in here, though. Like, if I you think really about, like if this. you think about the price range, that's not real yeah. wood. Don't get too excited. Oh, well, you, you could have fooled me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't have, you know, Alcantara or suede headlining, no, and this is the don't. top trim. This is the top trim. Okay, um, but you do have. A shifter. A gear, like just a normal shifter. Oh. How hard is that, right, to do? It's just, we're going to talk about that in a second. And anyway, we've got, we got grab handles. This is very Mercedes GLE do you think slash so? GLS. It's, it's gone for that, that off soft rotor vibe. Soft that's what, rotor, they, that's what yeah. they're going for here. Exactly. Um, we have this screen, which is fine, but and yeah. I, think the, I think the Palisade has it too, where there's like an extra bezel bezel around the bezel so that that's kind of where you you lose out and you know we, we discussed about this stuff you know would you get an escalade for double the price i'm not sure it's <laughs> but the escalade does have an unbelievable just don't was it 5700 inch screen yeah i got a big tv at home if i want to get tv <laughs> I was, like this is just a car it doesn't need to be that intense the anyway. seating position is quite high i think they could have gone a Bit, I would pay an extra thousand bucks for a nicer seat. Or squishier seats. Squishier, maybe. more, yeah, more they're, luxurious. They're, they're like long under the leg, though. Um, not like, no, they are comfortable. Like not long in the tooth, long in the leg. Like, they, the leg. They're, they're underneath, they're supportive. I don't mind them at all. This is a completely, completely adequate interior. There's yeah. no materials in here that are offensive. It doesn't really creak or anything. It's well made. The ergonomics is good, right? Like, yep. the ergonomics is good. They are. This good. is what happens in Canada. How many ergonomics are there? Is there speak. more than one? <laughs> so yeah. So but, but these are all buttons, and then everything on the screen is. Yes. Is, this, I will say that the the actual screen stuff doesn't feel very smooth. Like it can be laggy. quite slow. Yeah. It's I click bit... something. Like wow, that lag. was like ten seconds. That's a yeah. big lag. So yeah, so, that's not awesome. But car plays really quick, mm -hmm. and that's all I really care about. I don't like the four spoke steering wheel. Well, you're just gonna have to get over it, aren't you? Let's go have a look <laughs> at the Hyundai. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's better. It immediately feels cleaner. I feel like we're being fooled by the cream. Right? I'm a sucker for cream. I've been hurt before. <laughs> I think it looks a lot cleaner. This is very, as you would say, nautical. Um, because nautical. this looks exactly like the Bentley that we drove. I mean, like minus a hundred thousand dollars. But like, oh, I see. Like it's got the 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 navy blue. It's also got GV80 vibes. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a couple things in here that I need to point out. Number one, I well, first of all, <laughs> number two, I have two more speakers than you. You do. I have two more speakers in this, so the sound system is maybe is. maybe noticeably better. But we we can tell the difference. But we know, have audio files. Audio files on our off. team. Yeah. Yeah. And they said that this is better with the twelve speakers versus the ten. Okay. So these are the worst trend in automotive right now. This is. I'm not even kidding. It's this not, is. But it's not a deal breaker for me. This is almost a deal breaker for this entire car. Wow. If you're doing three point turns on the road, you literally have to go, uh, d no, you can't, there's a little line on it, it's not enough. As I said, I don't want to put my car into drive by Braille. I just want to be able to go thunk into drive. You do drive. have to look at it. You it's stupid. Have to look at it. It's it, There's no reason. You could have put a gear selector here or whatever. Um, anyway, I like this little space under yeah, here. Yeah, lovely storage here. Yeah, the steering wheel is three spoke. I think it's a nice looking steering And I have paddles. Um, now, gauge cluster. So, I know we talked about it before already, but like, come on, it's so so much nicer. I, I like it. It doesn't execute everything perfectly. So the uh, the indic when you indicate and it shows the the visual display of what's happening. Yeah. Like yeah, that's fun if you want to do a wimble what. A wimble what? <laughs> <laughs> um, but in in reality, it's the the frame rate, the quality. It it becomes a gimmick. The problem is, is that I don't trust it. it. Doesn't matter how good it is. If I look, I'm always looking and then looking. No, and I found so the Kia has it in the middle yeah. in just one screen, and I find that I don't use it at all. It feels right. like it feels like such a, a deviation from the road to look down. Yeah, that doesn't it doesn't actually help. May I direct your attention to my suede? It's not even like suede. I don't know. It's like fur. There's fur on my roof. It's very nice. It's really soft and yeah. nice. It really is. And I've got this like quilted leather. Oh, also, steel on the speakers. Not to go on about it. Yeah. That rev counter being mm -hmm. anti-clockwise. Yes. I still really don't like that. Oh come on! It, of all the things. It's you not could a performance car, so I'm not staring at the revs that much. Yeah. But like, ugh, it's not great. This is okay. It, it has to be said that no matter what you say, this is a nicer interior to be in than that interior. You can't really say no matter what you say. Well, that's, that's how arguments work with me. However. Yeah, however. I agree. Okay. And I think, and I guess we didn't really say when we were walking around these cars, I think I would like to take this interior with that exterior. Yeah, that would be the perfect combination of these. The problem is, is that the exterior of this is still totally acceptable for me. Yeah. That this just becomes like, styling-wise, an automatic kind of win, right? And it does have those electric power folding third row. Yeah, and I think, you know, because of the cost saving versus the competition, yep. 
I would go for the calligraphy trim. I would get the top trim to get the full feature set. Yeah, yeah, why would you not, right? I mean, like, it's not, I know this is a, a wrong sentence to say it's not that much money. It is a lot of money. These are very expensive. But compared to what you'll get in the Germans, Yes, yeah, so this is a half the price of an it's X7. It's literally half the price. Fully, fully trimmed out, it's half the price of a base X7. It's half the price of an X7, and it is 75% of the car. What about the Escalade? I thought these are more Escalade fighters than... Because it doesn't have okay, nearly great. the powertrain. This is better than the Escalade. All the, like, it, the Escalade is obviously a truck, and it's got you know like a V8. It's better for towing. But like in terms of daily hey, livability... These tow 5,000 pounds. That's right? pretty significant, and actually. if you get the towing package, they yep. have self-leveling suspension, which apparently is a, is a slightly more like primitive version of self-loving suspension. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. But it's still something. I mean, either way, the fact that you could take the family and the boat to a place, yeah. that's all you need. And it's comfortable and quiet. And I, I do have to, the, the passenger talk thing right there. Just need to get right a there. family and a, and a boat. And a boat and a place to go. And a friend. <laughs> Anything. Conclusion time? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, maybe the answer then, for everyone but James, is a Telesade or a Palluride. The true answer though is either. In their class, they win. And if you're sold on the styling of one of them, let that be your guide. For me though, the digital dash with the electric third row in the interior of the Palisade takes the win. James? Ah, uh, it is very, very close. But even though I prefer the exterior looks of the Kia, I think, yeah, that dash and the cleaner interior aesthetic pushes the Palisade just over the top. But then I'd miss the orange DRLs. And the physical shifter. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, Palisade. No take backs. But yeah, you, you can't really go wrong here. Great vehicles. Everything beyond these in terms of price is just a case of want. Because these two have everything you could ever actually need. Thanks for watching.